This is Cadillac Unscripted, sponsored by Independent Bank on 107.9 CDY. It is another Saturday morning of local chat. Katie Huckle is my co-host, and we've got a couple of things in the spotlight. A, the Cadillac Craft Beer Festival, and B, the Cadillac Area Visitors Bureau. And we have Kathy Morin and Lindsay Westorp with us to talk about both of those topics. And Katie, I'm going to let you take the first uh the first stanza here, all right? Yes, thank you. Welcome, right. ladies. Thank you. So one of our favorite things about Cadillac, and I kind of call it one of the glue items, is tourism. So tell us what you've got going on. Here comes the Craft Beer Festival. Mm-hmm. When is it? How do people get tickets? Tell us about the venue for folks that have never gone. Right. So this is the 12th annual Cadillac Craft Beer Festival it started out very, very small, um, and it's grown every single year, a little break over COVID, and we had our biggest year last year. Um, it's always been down in the city park. This year, we've expanded the foot. We sold out last year, so we expanded awesome. the footprint, um, and we're adding 500 extra tickets to the mix, so there'll be more people, there'll be more room. We've ordered more yard games. We have more brewers than we've ever had. We have more sponsors than we've ever had. We have 110 volunteers signed up as of today uh, which is 10 more than we've ever had so like we're just gearing up for another record year so it's very exciting okay back up the truck 500 more More tickets tickets. okay so which means how many people will be there there were 1500 people tickets sold last year so that was that was by far the most um so this year we hope to our, our ticket sales so far are tracking ahead of last year. Okay, so when we look at the population of Cadillac, how many? I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is a big number. It's a big, it's a big party. It feels like a big tailgate, and um, it's fall, and the I, the colors might be changing a little early, and so it's a, it's always like a fun atmosphere to kind of kick off fall season. And what are the dates? It's one. Is it one? Yep, day? just okay. one day. Saturday, September twenty third. Um, like I said, down in the park in the Cadillac Commons, and there's a cornhole tournament happening in the market um, adjacent to the park. Um, so that's that's another new thing in the last couple of years. It's expanded uh, a lot. This is you know this is what people in Northern Michigan like to do. You know, I mean, if we're on the weekend, what what sounds better? Right. So we get, we get a lot of local people, but we get just as many out of town people, and um, we feature almost exclusively all Michigan brewers and spirits and ciders. And so uh, we have a good mix of like, we'll have shorts, a big, you know, oh, that's yes. big for the, for yeah. Michigan. And then yeah. we've got these up and comers that we've have three or four of them, new ones to our festival that are just getting going last year or two. So we always have a mix of the small ones and, and the big ones. But um, we see a lot of, especially with our online ticket sales, we see a lot of out of town zip codes and, and things that line up with, um, things that we do at the Visitors Bureau to bring people from outside of town. 110 volunteers. How so did far. you corral? We only need, we only need 10 more. <laughs> In, sure. Okay, so if, if I'm out there and I think I might want to be a volunteer, what do your volunteers do? So what's left now, because the word's kind of gotten out and these first shift beer pourers fill up fast because they get a discounted ticket into the uh, the, into the second half of the event so they get to pour and then they get to have fun but the second shift pouring is is what fills up the last um and so it's it's just fun like like every we have so many repeat volunteers because they just enjoy themselves um during the fact you know there's there's music happening they get to talk to people they get to taste test the brews and talk about you know or steer people in the right direction because they're going to be a hundred I, I mean we don't have a final tally on the flavors but over a hundred different beers to choose from and it's kind of hard to pick and choose which ones you might like so <clears throat> everybody enjoys it and and new last year and we'll continue this um, moving forward as a volunteer appreciation party afterwards um, to recruit more volunteers mm-hmm. and recruit more uh, planning festival committee planners because it takes a core group of people many months to to line all this stuff up so where do the pro will you make money number one and where will the proceeds go yeah so <clears throat> we've always like the first 10 years i'd say we always made a little bit of money but typically beer festivals are built to be fundraisers and I, ours was never really uh, marketed that way and that's a change last year too um so the committee decided to forward proceeds to Cadillac area festivals and events 
which is an organization, a nonprofit organization that uh, supports events in the greater Cadillac area. So along with the Visitors Bureau, 25, 30 mile radius of downtown Cadillac. So we're including things like Harry at a Blueberry Festival and like down south to Leroy Razaski Days, potential, you know, Buckley Old Engine Show, mm-hmm. you know, um, that far out in each direction. And so all of these little community events have their own planning committees, but they need fun. You know, mm-hmm. it's something that took a hit during COVID. And so I think it's a really good use of the funds. And so last year we really unlocked something with sponsors and we're on track to beat it again so it's going to be a very um successful fundraising event and and use that money like as mini grants to these smaller um committees to help sustain their festivals that is kind of nothing that in a way that hadn't been done before you have real momentum with this i think we do Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm excited Mm -hmm. i called it last year i said they're like, is this a fluke? I'm like, this is not a fluke. We unlocked something here. So I'm excited. Yeah. Tell me, and then we're going to talk to Kathy here mm-hmm. next, but tell me when you started planning for 2023. Oh. Uh-huh. Before the last one ended. Okay. About eight o'clock. Like by the time it gets dark, if I can have one drink at the end and I'm like, okay, we got to do this, mm-hmm. this, and this better next year. So it's, it starts pretty much on the back end of, around the heels of, of the previous event. And, and so like this core group meets all year long um, and we're, we're open to suggestions um, uh, through that volunteer appreciation party. You know, we invited volunteers from the previous four or five, six years of mm-hmm. what we had records for, email records for. We sent on an e-blast to 300 plus people and invited them to come to the Willow uh, greenhouse and got some interviews from them asked them why they they like to volunteer gave them free drinks and free food and and, <laughs> and, cel- <That'll> do it. <laughs> and celebrated them so you know that went over really well and we had four or five new people sign up and join our our full-time planning committee um so we are the fun festival in town and it's all festivals are a lot of work but um this one it's a little bit easier to swallow when it's when I've, when that many people have that good of a time, you know. Sure, it's a good way to good way to put it. Um, yeah, I spent some time with Joy Vendry last weekend, oh. and <laughs> she was yeah, yeah, she was integral in getting it started, and and mm-hmm. I hopped on maybe a year or two after after she started it, and. And we all grew it together. There's four of us on the committee still from the original team. Is that right? With 10 plus years experience. And so, yeah, it, it's been really neat to look back all those years and how we'd mm-hmm. add something new every year. And she did a great job of leading the group and keeping everyone on task. Uh, well, she just said it's amazing to see what these guys have done, where they have taken this. Well, so. she's free to come back if she likes and <laughs> help out. She's a busy lady right I now. I know it. I know it. <laughs> Let's talk to Kathy, speaking sure. of, of some of Joy's roles in the sure, community. Sure, sure. Right? Um, director of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, mm-hmm. post-COVID, how's it going? You know, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, we really, you know, really kind of had a boom with outdoor recreation and yes, COVID and so many people, you know, and so many people wanting to get out and experience Northern Michigan and experience outdoor recreation. And so we were perfectly, um, you know, poised for that. And so we, um, we didn't have as much of a hit as maybe more of the urban areas. And so, um, we've just had an influx of visitors, you know, and again, things like the, the craft beer festival and some of the other things that, um, you know, our organization has kind of transformed and changed Mm -hmm. a bit over the last couple of years. Um, Yeah, coming out of COVID, plus with, you know, Joy leaving um, October 2020 uh, and through COVID, which again, I'm thrilled for her and she has an amazing role and she's continued to grow, which is awesome. Um, But it was kind of taking that step back of like, okay, so how are we, you know, Mm -hmm. what's next? You know, Mm -hmm. it was, you know, with a director of 10 years leaving and COVID and, and kind of just you know what's next and so we went through a process um and it was just it was really really cool to see um just the evolution of Mm -hmm. um how the visitors bureaus even just not just ours but i mean overall and so um a lot of times it was previously again industry-wide it was um reaching out to visitors and, and things out of the area and out of the state and through um there through covid a lot of communities you know realized well hey we have a lot of you know kind of looking a little more internal you know so to speak and so just kind of building off of that so um you know our organization is not tax funded some people don't 
quite understand our affiliation. Right. We are um, a separate 501c, mm-hmm. uh, 501c6 organization, and we're funded by people staying in our lodging rooms. So if somebody were to come stay at town in town in one of the hotels, um, there's a 5% assessment. And that is remitted to us, just like you know, the six percent uh, Michigan sales tax goes to Lansing, and so those you know those five percents add up, mm-hmm. and that's what um, funds our organization and for us to reinvest into marketing support and um, you know destination development projects and things like that. So it's been um, kind of a really cool and unique opportunity, like I said, with COVID, um, because we did have an influx of visitors, so that meant more of an influx of revenue for our lodging properties and for our organization to be able to take on new and different things um and like i said shift a bit away you know obviously we're ultimately a marketing organization you know Lindsay is our marketing manager and so i mean mm-hmm. that's full you know full on yeah, you know yeah. things like that um full but then, time and full time then some um mm-hmm. and then you know other projects we look at like destination development projects where um giving people a reason to want to come to cadillac right. you know so we can market all day long come to cadillac come to cadillac but when they get here, what is their visitor experience, and what are they going to do, and and mm-hmm. where are they going to go, where they're going to eat, what are they, you know, what are the activities and things that are going to make them have a great experience, but then also want to come back. So, okay. um, so we're a team of three, <laughs> a mighty team of three. I was going to say mighty, mighty little team of three. Um, we do have some contract staff and all that, which are very very helpful. Um, but we have ideas and aspirations. Um, you know, if we were a staff of twice or maybe three times the size. So, um, Kathy, I, I have yeah. a question because sure. how do you capture information from the tourists mm-hmm. after they've been here about their experience? Well, there's a lot, obviously, a lot of the, um, the online reviews and things like that. Okay. We, you know, it's, um, you know, seeing a lot of repeat visitors, seeing a lot of um, people that are very, very loyal to the Cadillac area. Um, we, we saw this actually with the state park closure um, mm-hmm. earlier this summer when they were temporarily closed to do some amazing infrastructure improvements. Um, but even just those several weeks where people who normally would be here for Memorial Day weekend or something like that was just like... It was like this sadness of, you know, okay, well, at least we'll get there next year. I mean, it was just, there's so much loyalty to the Cadillac area. And then um, we also threw, you know, some of our, you know, and it, it's where we kind of joke about um, some of the, the details of, you know, the geofencing and all the different things that you can uh-huh. kind of do, like research uh-huh. and, and gather data. Um totally like legal and all that kind of stuff right. but I mean just to kind of see you know the, the repeat visitation and and um, you know I know some of the properties like they've got you know golf groups at Evergreen Resort there's golf groups that have been coming for 20 30 years I mean it's just annual trips and annual things and um, you know we've got uh, the the fish decoy carving competition happening right now at the Lake Cadillac Resort, and you know that's something that they're hoping to bring and, and continue on year after year. And so mm-hmm. there's a lot of these legacy things that we know that people are coming, um, but then also again these efforts that we're making to want to have people come here, even if they haven't been here before, or maybe rediscover, you know, or you know, kind of look at new ways to see Cadillac. Interesting. You know, I've had customers buying homes from Chicago or let's say from Indianapolis. You know, they're looking for their little spot in the woods and want to get away. And what I've heard from people from urban areas is Cadillac's very affordable. Yes. Do you hear that too? It is. It is. And, you know, for being a northern Michigan area compared to, you know, others, maybe to the north of us. no you names. Know, <laughs> no names. Um, you know, Cherry Festival. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but I mean, things like that. I and mean, realistically, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, looking at market, you know, markets and kind of comparison and, and things like that. Um, you know, a, a lodging room in the Cadillac area the week of Cherry Fest versus up there. And we actually did that a couple of years ago. And it was it was literally the same, like a same branded hotel, 45 minutes apart. And it was like, I don't even remember. Maybe like our two hundred dollars that you know July was like six seven hundred dollars for like that's something. No, that was a, <laughs> that was a Hampton Inn back then, but um, but you know those kinds of things. So I mean, yeah. but we are we're an affordable market. I mean, not only for people looking for homes, you know, or second homes, those kinds of things, but also um, 
just to visit, you know, and we kind of look at ourselves as, um, you know, we just say like the blue jeans and beer, but just kind of that yeah. come as you are. You like it's mm-hmm. not pretentious. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Come, you know, grab your golf clubs, right. hang out by the fire, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. You know, there's obviously some really cute, you know, as you know, some really cute places to shop downtown if you sure. want to get, you know, some specialty, um, you know, housewares or specialty clothes or something like that. There's some really cute things there. But overall, just the overall vibe of our area yes. is just like relaxed and mellow and just kind of come and have fun and just, ex- you know, experience and enjoy what we have to offer. Mm-hmm. I mean, so much of it is outdoors, isn't it? It is. It is. We are so blessed so blessed to have um, all the resources here. And it's great that we have not only the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, but also the Federal Forest. So we have the U.S. Forest Service, right. which again, back to Joy, you know, uh-huh. Joy's, um, you know, first stop was uh, the Forest Service office here. And now she's um, working off here out of Duluth, um, yeah, you know, know but, um, but things like that. So it's, it's fantastic to have those resources here in, um, in having those organizations as partners for us to help and, um, you know, like I said, build out the assets, building out Cadillac Pathway, building out the White Pine Trailhead, um, you know, and then with that, things that have come up, you know, we knew that um, there was a couple guys that that were downstate and um, they had heard and, and seen about like the updates of the, the Cadillac Pathway. And so they brought up, um, it's called the Fatty Caddy Bicycle ah. Race. It was fun, the Bye. Fatty Caddy. Um, <laughs> And that was back in the winter. I think that was February, February last year. And so that was really cool. And it was just like a first time event. And it was a fat tire bike. And it was fantastic. And then those same guys also revived the Bear Claw Epic. um, And that was in uh, May. And so things like that where your board kind of gets out and within these niche groups. um, And then and then also just providing the um, event support. So while we're not actually the ones running the craft beer festival or the fatty caddy or whatever, um, it's just providing that additional support to make sure the event organizers are connected to who they need to be connected to, mm-hmm. or it's, you know, Lindsay's help and background of, um, boosting Facebook events or, or yeah. things like that, you know? And so, um, you know, we, last year we had those, the kite, uh, the kite jam guys, the Midwest kite jam. And the first year it was kind of like, we're looking out, we're like, who are these people out there? You know? <laughs> and then, um, uh, we kind of go out and you meet with them and you're like, what do you, you know, what can we do to make this awesome? And they come back the next year and we're a little more prepared since we knew they were coming. Um, but just things like that, where we can help as an, or, you know, a marketing organization, mm-hmm. just help boost out, and hey, you know, have them have a great experience. So not only are they bringing, you know, outside people in, and again, that helps reinvest in our organization to be able to reinvest in the marketing and reinvest in the community, but just makes them have a great experience when they come here. So, um, and ultimately that's, you know, that's what we're, you know, that's what our role is to help support the things, you know, these different events and festivals and things where, um, you know, we are, we're, we're front and center, so to speak, to help, but we, um, they're not our event (laughs) but we're very much willing to help um and jump in and help promote it and and that kind of thing so um real quick what are you hearing i mean you're you're close to our hotel owners yeah what are you hearing from hotel and resort owners right now yeah so we um well we gauge uh actually every week we reach out to them and just kind of touch base like hey how's it going this week just to kind of get an idea of our occupancy um we've had a really solid summer right and um actually last year um well we also get the numbers reported to us you know as our our five percent revenue or occupancy and so we are able to track pretty almost real time and um last year our fiscal year ending april 30th was the highest on record no so, kidding yeah yeah congratulations thank you and so it's it again it's a testament to um the staff oh my goodness who are you know they're do, always doing more with less yeah. um and these front desk staff and the hotels they're doing fantastic um and i think it's just a combination of those factors of being affordable and people you know, being, um, you know, right on the 131 corridor, mm-hmm. we're a really easy shot from people coming, you know, Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, uh, Fort Bend, or excuse me, Fort Wayne, Indiana, South mm-hmm. Bend, Indiana, yeah. um, you know, those kinds of markets. So um, it's been really, it's been good. And, and we're also finding a lot, you know, again, changes with COVID or post, oh, I don't even know what, I hate to say post COVID since right. we're kind of spiking again or whatever, right. um, whatever it is. Um, but the flexibility that people have. Mm-hmm. 
So where we used to be so much more of a, you know, a Friday through Sunday destination, right. yeah. um, people can stretch that out. Maybe they um, are coming Thursday through Monday because they can bring their laptop and have a Friday morning conference call, you know, while sitting in their hotel room and then go grab their golf clubs and go, you know hit out, you know, eight holes, or excuse me, 18 holes, eight <laughs> holes, not very much, um, mm-hmm. 18 holes over here at El Dorado. I mean, so it's, there's so much more flexibility in um, people's schedules and just how they travel and, and those patterns and stuff too. Okay. I, I'm just interested in your opinion on the future here for, sure. for tourism and sure. Cadillac. Do you see new hotel and resort owners launching here? Short answer, yes. Really? Yes. She looks like she knows something. I, it's so exciting. I do. Um, I am aware of one parcel that is for sure so, that has been purchased. Um, not They're kind of on hold with that. And then there's another one I know that's going through some due diligence right now for that. Um, that's about the extent of what I can say. So exciting. <laughs> but, it's, but it's just it's exciting to see the reinvestment in, mm-hmm. you know, the the investment and reinvestment um, with these properties. Um, you know, our, the Hampton Inn just earlier this year sold to um, a developer um, and they transferred it, transformed it to Comfort Inn, but they're doing a full renovation and that property is 111 rooms. So, you know, they're putting, they're investing in Cadillac and those same owners also own the Days Inn um, on the west side and they reinvested and redid that entire renovation there um, about four or five years ago. So, you know, you have these owners, you know, regionally or wherever they're coming from and in, in investing and reinvesting because they believe and they see what's happening. Um, and, and that's what we've, we've heard that a lot the last year or so that, um, in so many ways that Cadillac is just, like, we're just, just right on that edge, like right on the edge of just um, a really positive boom. Ooh, so. she's nodding her head. Let's hear about it. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's all true what she said. Oh, yeah. oh okay. <laughs> you, you want to back that up with, uh... <laughs> I don't know. She, she covered a lot there. Yeah. It's, um, I think like, like she said, um, we're in very regular communication with the lodging properties, but we've also rounded up all the other hospitality-based businesses, restaurants, yeah. retail, yeah. and so we're rounding them all up regularly. Yeah. Oh, and, um, good. And there's a lot of new business owners, like in our downtown, um, and we've been we've made great strides in Cadillac West this summer, just relationship building and things, and and getting these people in the same room together, and with the city, and with the chamber. And uh-huh. a lot of um, new synergy there that's exciting. It, it's real collaboration. You know, we had Caitlin Stark in recently, yeah. and, and she was telling us about these remote salaries. Well, we, we'd never really thought about that. You know, when you talked about someone who might be able to stay through Monday or Tuesday, yeah. now there are people that can move here, yeah. and with them comes some nice income streams that can then go out for dinner and spend money in stores and... Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Can you speak to that? Um, yeah, it just it's um, yeah, it is. It's, it's allowing a lot more flexibility. Um, it does get a little weird. And, and Caitlin is much more poised to speak, you know, regarding like local economics and things like that. It is a bit challenging, though, while there's um, some groups of population that are struggling with certain things. Other sure. ones have a lot more disposable income. It's just, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just it's we're seeing a lot of that, you know, and to, you know, to your point of people, um, you know, have, being able to live anywhere. Um, I, I've always used my example. My, my brother was very textbook. He lived in Chicago and then he bought his ca- you know, cottage up in Higgins Lake because that's where we went to his kids. Oh. And, you know, and so he, he was working for, um, a large, uh, educational institution in Chicago, but doing it from Higgins Lake, Michigan Incredible. in this, you know, cute and then, you know, go out and do his work and then take his conference call and then go get his little, you know, canoe and go out and paddle <laughs> or, you know, take his, his Jeep and go out, you know, on the trails or something like that, you know? Uh-huh. So, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of that. And, and that was the th- exactly that, you know, the Chicago income living in Higgins Lake and being able to get out and do all the things um, mm-hmm. with that, you know, that flexibility. So, um, so if we have a, a little more time, I want to speak to one initiative that we have that we are so excited about. Speaking of Jeeps, um, the, the last several years, um, there's been an identify, like our, our properties have identified kind of like, you know, 
there's always that weird time frame. It's like if we don't have snow, we need to be able to golf. If we sure. don't, if we can't golf, we need snow. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like those in between times right. and like, you know, March, April, not always great. And yeah. so, um, and so we've been working on an initiative uh, with our partners for the last year, year and a half um, regarding ORVs. So that'd be, you know, your side by sides and quads and that kind of thing. And so, um, Working mostly primarily in conjunction with U.S. Forest Service, we've developed a route, or not really a route, like a map, how do we call it, a scenic ride. So (laughs) kind of taking people through just kind of roads that are legal for them to ride on with ORVs, just kind of mapping out some nice places, um, points of interest of like where to get gas or where to eat or where to stay, and just kind of getting that out there because um, they were finding so many new users, you know, again, with this yes. boom of outdoor recreation that included people um, buying, you know, side by sides, you know, the razors and those kinds of things that no idea what they were doing. <laughs> they really had no idea, um, you know, the safety and the stewardship and those kinds of things. Right. And so um, really want to, to encourage Cadillac is in, uh, you know, again, a welcoming area, family friendly area, you know, bring your kids and bring your side by side or rent. We have places that you can rent and here are the rules and here are some places you can go and this is where you can stay and, and those kinds of things. So um, we're very excited about it. It's taken a, a while to get to the point where we are with our partners, but at the same time, um, you know, we've, we've determined it's, it's taken time because we're doing it well. Right. And we're doing. You it want right. to do it right. Correct. Mm-hmm. And and you know we you know we don't want to mess with the Forest Service and the DNR and the Road Commission and the Sheriff's Department. We need to work with them and you know uh-huh. <laughs> not put things out yeah. and have them say what are you doing and why. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and because you're involving all those entities, it's going to take you a lot longer to get to the the, the end point. Well, Absolutely. And and I want to tell you when you're on federal land in those, there is no joke about mm-hmm. the speed limit. It's right. it's it is hard and fast, and it's yes. no joke. Yes, and that's what we want people, again, we want them to come but and, and have, follow the rules and yeah. be safe and have fun. And so while we're um, we're working, still building on working this initiative um, to market our area as a multi-season destination for ORVs, um, it's just as much, if not more, um, the safety, the stewardship, you know, partnering with Leave No Trace and Tread Lightly to, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of that yeah, user education in that. So yeah. Um, so we'll have a soft launch this fall and then a major launch in the spring um, with that. And we're very, very excited about that. It's actually been really cool for us to be able to go out, um, you know, market research out on, you know, a side by side or a Jeep, uh, you know, you know, Pete, oh, darn, I know, right? <laughs> you know, we go out and meet with, you know, Pete Finch from Coyote Crossing is on our board and he's been super instrumental with helping and, oh, boy, you know, yes. we'll hop in Pete's yeah. Jeep and go tootle around a bit. And uh, one yeah. time he got Lindsay, Law, you know, Lindsay, a group of them were out for, with a, with a visitor. <laughs> uh, GPS in the, in the side by side, shout out to Bigfoot Epic Adventures in Manton. Um, got us lost twice and he knows where he's going right. so that just goes to show sure. how much work you know is yes. gonna we didn't have any we get calls all the time we get um comments online emails like people asking we had nothing to give these people when we have snowmobilers come up here we have their map everything's very sure. well marked you know exactly what you're doing where you're going um and none of that existed so this was like our kind of the only completely undeveloped asset recreation asset that we had and so we knew it was important to uh, such a emerging or uh, past emerging at this point it's just booming you know uh, with the record level of sales and everything so um it's taken a bit of time but it's it's going to be a, a long-term thing that that people come here for years for so this is way year year it. one yeah. yeah way to harness it ladies you know let me tell you stuff because i've learned a little about about these hot shots slingshots whatever i mean all these <laughs> i see them on dirt roads all the time and people will stop if i'm running and they'll ask me hey do you know where the dublin store is oh, i have no idea where anything you know i'm terrible with directions but what i've learned is demographically there are old people i mean older than us richie there are old it's hard to imagine well there are old people out on these things and they've got helmets on and it looks like they're ready for the indy 500 i mean they're so excited out on like what i call like a little toy yeah you know but they've got their whatever plastic sides and then if you talk to restaurant owners they're like in slow times 
I mean, the, it's snowmobiles and these ORVs and all the well, names for them is what keeps these places going. And that's what you're talking about, filling that no that's man's right. land. And, and spe- yes. the, the no man's land in spring is probably worse than it is in fall because yeah. you have the leaves to fall back on, right? Correct. Yeah. Very, very much so. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the, the snowmobiling, it's 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 hard because the you know because Cadillac has always been known as quite a snowmobile destination, but you know unfortunately realistically the snowfall has um, quite declined mm-hmm. over the last several years, and so we absolutely still welcome the snowmobilers and um, the infrastructure is there and the businesses will absolutely support that. But this is also something that we um, you know we can't turn away from right. you know turn away from that um, you know because it's it's still very much something that's going to benefit our area year round and um, the businesses are really excited about that the users are excited about that um, the, the ugly spring season is perfect for ORV sure <laughs> so it's it's a nice thing to put in that category you know mud is great for these guys oh absolutely. so yeah yeah, yeah and, and it, and it's hard to market back, for anything else. Exactly, you go back to a casual lifestyle. Guess guess what you wear when you're in an ORV, Rich? Blue jeans. That's right, and tennis shoes or boots and <laughs> no beer, just yeah. boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're gonna get dirty. I can tell you, yep. you're gonna have a good time, ladies. You you guys have, like I said, so much momentum is the word that I would use. And and oh my gosh, the sky's the limit for you. I have one question because we're running out of time. If money was no object, and someone handed you a big fat check what would you ladies do with it oh gosh okay i have two right okay. off the bat okay. because they're on our wish list okay. um and Lindsay probably guesses what they're. so one is um we're talking about a mobile visitor center Ooh. so um instead of people having to go to one spot you know we've put the kiosks around town sure. and we're trying to get more and having this um, mobile visitor center being out to where people are where the festivals, parades, those kinds of things. Um, my other super duper major wish, that one's a little more attainable. We're work actually in the works with that. Okay. Um, super attainable, unatta- well, maybe not unattainable. Um, there is Wexford, uh, County Wexford, Ireland. And oh. I follow them on social media. And I'm like, you know, I would love, love, love a um, just some kind of exchange of, you know, County Wexford, Ireland and Wexford Rotary County. Rotary does that with, with uh, uh matching like matching twin cities or or Mm -hmm. or sister brother cities or something so are they gonna send a 46 year old over i don't know (laughs) (laughs) i know rotary isn't that for the the high school kids um the exchange (laughs) um but then i even thought that too you know because then there's other you know there's claire and emmett and ross common and some of you know antrim and and there's a handful of other counties here that are county you know over in in ireland so again total wish list um i would love some sort of I don't know. Maybe I just want somebody to send me to Ireland. I don't know. <laughs> I do some research. I'll take pictures. I don't bring them over here. Um, that is that is very much the wish the wish list. Um, I don't know that I could get my board um, to approve that expense. Um, bring someone here first, and then there you know, go. and have them you know kind of do this you know international exchange. Um, but yeah, our board is absolutely wonderful. Very very supportive. Um, we're very grateful for that that they um, allow us to kind of run with these um, these ideas that we get and. Well, run, run is the right word, Rich. I would say sprint is what I would say. Okay. But watching this team in action in the studio this morning, so supportive of one another. Yeah. When one of you is talking, the other one's nodding your head and smiling. And um, what what an incredible team. That yeah. you, that, that, and Marcy too. And, Mar- yeah, and Mar- Marcy, Marcy too. Marcy, Marcy's okay. holding down the office and then <laughs> hanging out, answering phones and things for us. Um, but yes, Marcy is amazing. Also, we couldn't do uh, what we do without her, and uh, as well as our extended partners, um, like I said, you know, the chamber and the city and and everybody else, um, as well as our contract staff. We we couldn't do this without everybody. Well, thank you for keeping us on the map, okay? then putting us on, on the map, and then bringing more people and showing them the Cadillac map. I mean, thank you for what you're doing for Cadillac. Yeah, thank you. Kathy Morin and Lindsay Westorp from the Cadillac Visitors Bureau with us this morning. Join us next week for more local chat, and don't miss the Cadillac Craft Beer Festival next Saturday in Cadillac, 107.9 CDY.